The Batman storyline has been adapted over and over again, movie after movie, but with Matt Reeves' new take on the Dark Knight, there was an accessibility to Gotham as well as an overarching influence of darkness to reflect the city. This was not only the case for the story, but for the costume design as well. From Batman and Selina's suits to the everyday clothing that the characters wore, the wardrobe was down to earth and could be found easily not only in Gotham, but stores near you too. With this video I want to show you what each character was wearing, highlight the overarching tone of darkness as well as the other influences that were specific to each character, and then show you how you too can dress like them. As I mentioned before, the director for the 2022 The Batman was Matt Reeves, with his costume designers being Jacqueline Duran, David Crossman, and Glenn Dillon. Yeah, so they decided to go with three costume designs for this film. Glenn and Dylan worked on the bat suit, meanwhile Jacqueline worked on the clothing for all other characters. Some of the movies that they've done are 1917, Rogue One, Pearl Harbor, and then of course, The Batman. So let's get into the costume design. Bruce's style was workwear, biker core, streetwear, influenced by goth and grunge. Most of his wardrobe consisted of semi-oversized t-shirts with graphics or some distressing, paired with some button-ups that had a roomier fit and sometimes even layering them together. And on bottom, he's usually in these black straight leg chino pants. The only time Bruce ever dresses up is when he's going to the mayor's funeral, where he is wearing a slim black suit with a white French cuffed button-up with a thin pattern tie and a dark wool notched collar overcoat. I think the slim suit was a way of Matt and Jacqueline to differentiate Bruce from all other Bruces. In this adaptation, Bruce is around the age of 30, and since he's so young, they decided to give him more of a youthful looking suit. But to be totally honest, although I liked how cleaned up he looks, I do wish the suit wasn't so slim on him. I feel like it's too slim. I think a straighter pair of suit pants and a more relaxed suit jacket would have fit him better and still would have had a youthful look. Now when Bruce is in between being himself and the Batman, he wears a specific outfit that Matt and the costume designers called the Drifter. The Drifter's outfit consists of a grey MA1 bomber jacket, a black fleece line zip up, and then an earth tone plaid flannel, and then on bottom he has these Caterpillar Cat 172 work pants in a grey and black colorway, and then on feet a pair of Austrian combat boots. For accessories, he has his tan backpack from Omiya that carries his bat suit, a maroon curved brim hat, a gray neck gaiter, boxing wrapped hands, as well as his motorcycle helmet. Matt said he was looking through the Batman Year One comic when he saw the Drifter for the first time. He was saying that Batman couldn't be lurking in the crowd looking for crime, so instead he dressed as the Drifter, aka somebody who can hide within the crowd. Pattinson really pushed for the workwear idea and liked how they're able to hide in plain sight and specifically referenced the dock workers in New York and wanted to use them as the Drifter's muse. Personally, I wonder if he was influenced by the Safdie brothers when he was working with them in the film Good Time. You can see the influence of Gotham grunge throughout his style, and maybe not so blatant, but it's definitely there. There's an undertone of darkness in everything he wears, basically, especially with his Drifter outfit. The combination of the colors reads very dark, and especially when you pair that with his makeup, you get a very gothic feel. Then you have the plaid shirt, straight leg pants, and layering, which is where I see a lot of the grunge influence. Now, these looks are pretty easy to recreate if you wanted to. With the Drifter outfit, for example, layering is key, an oversized bomber jacket in a light colorway like a gray or an olive from like Rothko or Alpha Industries, some construction pants and combat boots, and you basically have the outfit. I think they did a brilliant job with the Drifter's outfit. I love the layering behind it, and there's so many people that have cosplayed as him, and for a good reason. It's both an iconic look for cosplayers and an outfit that can be worn on a daily basis without anybody batting an eye. Now for the bad suit. Glenn, David, and Matt had the idea that this was the year two model so it was made to look like he had constructed it with basically with his bare hand and have it be somewhat worn down. You see a lot of these scratches and nicks and stuff, and for me the suit is where you see an obvious influence of goth. Glenn said that they wanted this suit to give you a feeling of the Grim Reaper, and they actually made the cowl of the suit look like a skull with vertebrae on the front neck. The other inspiration that was used for the suit was the military actually. They said that the body was based off military techniques seen in the Vietnam War to contemporary times, and with that, they wanted to make sure everything on his suit had a purpose, down to the bat symbol, which was actually used as a knife, which is really cool, I think. Now, going into some of the details of how the bat suit was made, the cowl was actually 3D printed molded rubber in order to make it look like it was leather. And it was actually sewn by hand, which must have taken painstakingly long. Meanwhile, the cape was actually made of a Japanese faux leather to give it better uh, range of motion. Now with this suit, he has that pair of Austrian military boots on feet and a black leather with some black gaiters over them. Now with the back suit, I see a crossover of goth and biker core, 
and would love to see somebody try to recreate this outfit as like an everyday look. If you were to take this and make it everyday wear, I would say getting a black or a dark gray pair of biker pants is like a great start to it. There's a lot of people nowadays wearing biker pants and they do not ride a motorcycle, so don't worry about being a poser. On top, I would definitely keep a dark palette, maybe throw back that um, drifter bomber jacket on, or throw a jacket like the Who's Jakov jacket here. Of course, you have to finish off with some black leather combat boots. One of my favorites is the all leather Vietnam War combat boots. But I really do like the idea of taking the bat suit and making it into everyday wear. An outfit like Corbin gives me a sense of Batman influence and somebody that actually has intentionally done this is the influencer Wisdom. Here we can see him dress like Batman and in his interpretation, he implemented a long black coat to represent the Batman cape, which I think is actually a great idea. For Selena, we see her embracing the biker core aesthetic, club scene, as well as a dominatrix influence in her wardrobe. Her clothes are definitely the opposite of Bruce, with her outfits being extremely form-fitting and tight to her body. She's wearing a lot of patent leather, from skirts to pants, to a skin-tight latex mini dress, and she pairs her bottoms with form-fitting tops like this white tank top or this black corset top. She's only wearing one coat in the movie, and it is this Sherpa notched collar overcoat in this dark gray that is pretty long on her, but keeps with the form-fitted look. On feet, she's seen in these knee-high patent leather heels, which give her even more edge to her look. And although there isn't much accessorizing for Selena, she does change her hair color and style a lot. From vibrant red bob to natural brown to a neon coral hairdo with some bangs, I really like the way that they use the wigs to kind of uh, give some vibrancy to Selena's outfits. So in the film, she hasn't really become Catwoman yet, but when looking for answers, she wears a slim-fitting black leather racer jumpsuit that appears to be fraying at the seams, possibly turning into the Catwoman suit, who knows? At first glance, it might not seem like a lot, but I love the details on this suit with the high band collar, the ribbing throughout, the paneling, and she's accessorizing with two things, a black belt with this wide buckle, and then a beanie that's been cut up to hide her identity. And then wouldn't you know, it's almost as if there's little cat ears on it from the seaming. I see a lot of darkness through her almost all black wardrobe and there's a moodiness that I get from her clothes, whether that be the jumpsuit or her knee high boots. Now, if you want to dress like Selena, it's pretty obvious to stick with leather, uh, patent or matte, but if the patent leather is too experimental for you, a matte leather will work just fine. I would say keep the rest of your outfit simple with whites, grays, and blacks, and try to go as tight fitting as you can. Because in my head, Selena's wardrobe is a darker and tighter fitting Luke Glanton from The Place Beyond the Pines, which is where I also get the biker core from. She may not be my style, but I love the idea of a guy wearing leather black biker skinny jeans with a white racer back tank. So with the Penguin, Jacqueline said that they intended for his wardrobe to have an influence of a 40s gangster with an 80s styled suit as well as an 80s black leather trench coat. Penguin isn't the boss yet and you can see how that's the case based off of his clothes because here you see his suit jacket's first button is actually below his waist showing that it's not properly tailored to him. He's kind of all over the place and not secure in his position in Gotham. There's a few suits he wears, a purple plaid shawl collar jacket, a pinstripe suit, another gray and black plaid suit, and under them are dress shirts like this light purple one. And then what's a low level mob boss without a fat short tie? You know, I see a lot of the 40s influence with that squared off pinstripe suit and that short tie. Over his suit jacket is this black leather trench coat that is almost floor length with uh, these raglan sleeves on it and large notch collar. If you've been paying attention, you'll notice that the collars of the suit jackets and trench coats are very overdramatic to continue with that 80s look that they wanted. So Gotham is a dark, moody, and dangerous place, and Penguin is kind of part of that problem. And I think this black trench coat is used as a symbol of the darkness that he brings to Gotham. On feet, he has a pair of two-tone black dress shoes, and then he accessorizes with some gold jewelry. Now, if you wanted to dress like the Penguin, I wouldn't go as far to say, look for such an ill-fitting suit like he did, but an 80s suit with padded shoulders to square you off with a relaxed fit would be perfect, and I would say make sure your pants are at least in a straight fit. Not too long though, a little breaking is okay, but you don't want to be tripping over your pants. And then don't forget to get yourself a black trench coat. And if you don't know where to turn for one, I would say hitting up your local thrift store would be your best bet for the best deal. Now, finally for the Riddler, it's pretty obvious that he had a military influence in his wardrobe. Jacqueline had actually said that she wanted his clothes to be 
stuff you could have found at a military surplus store. First thing I noticed about his outfit was obviously the US Army winter combat mask that looked to have been altered and had its lining ripped out. The next thing that caught my eye was the German military parka that was really beaten up to give it more of a dark appearance. Keeping with the ominous details, you can see the iconic question mark that has been painted on the left chest in white. What's different about this question mark from all the other ones is the obvious influence of the Zodiac Killer with its cryptic look that the Zodiac Killer was known for. Personally, I love the graphic. It's very simple yet bold and strong. Underneath his jacket is a green pullover. I don't have an ID on this piece, but considering the influences behind the Riddler, it was most likely just from like a surplus store. And then on bottom, he has a pair of black cargo pants. On feet, a pair of Rothko jungle boots in olive drab and black. And his only accessory is the clear pair of glasses that normally I wouldn't even bat an eye at. But when styled over his mask, it is harrowing. With the Riddler, it's a pretty easy look to pull off. All you really need to do is go to your nearest army surplus store and you're basically good to go. Make sure to go with a tonal green look on top with a military parka and then black pants, preferably cargos, and finish it off with some jungle boots on bottom and then you're good to go. I really love the jungle boots with the oversized cargo look. I think it's something that basically anybody could wear on an everyday basis. Personally, I've been really influenced by military clothing recently and all the details that go in it. I will hopefully be recording my military clothing collection soon, so look out for that if you're interested in it. I really appreciated what Matt and all the costume designers did creating this overarching theme of darkness and implementing that into the wardrobe, whether it was Bruce's gothic and grunge influence or the harrowing feel of the Riddler's outfit. I also thought that using so many pieces that were accessible was really refreshing to me. The idea of being able to recreate these looks is something that excites me personally. Plus, the film was just stylistically really fun to look at. So that's going to be it for this video. Let me know which character is your favorite style-wise and what you thought of the costume design in the comments down below. Please also subscribe, like the video, share it with a friend. That would mean a lot to me. Uh, that's how the channel grows. Follow me on my social media. It's all linked down below. I'm on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. Please let me know what video you want to see next, whether that be costume design, men's fashion, or I don't know, throw a curveball at me. Maybe I'll do it. And as always, thanks for watching.